Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech. I'm going to do a quick demo because I'm trying to connect Logseek to make.com. And by having it connected to make.com, for example, I can add something to Notion and add it towards my graph. So how is that going to look? I got a quick demo I got prepared here. So this is a temporary Notion database. I put like a live demo in it. It has some text. It's not migrated yet. Then I can go to this one which is my make script and we have Logseek over here. So now when I run this script, you'll see it creating a page, live demo and adding lines towards it. This is absolutely amazing, but it requires a couple of tricks. And in this video, I'm gonna explain what I did. So to start with, there is a problem and I'm gonna use draw.io to explain that a bit. And that is that if you do something like this, um, Logseek is running on my laptop and Make and Notion are running on the internet. And that's a problem that you hit with something like Make. Even now that Logseek has this API that you can talk to and that means that I can make it talk with Make, Make still can't access my laptop because firewalls and security make it that my laptop isn't available outside. Now, one of the solutions that you could use is something called Ngrok which makes a connection from your system straight towards to the internet and then you can access it. So it acts like a mediator. Your laptop talks towards Ngrok and Make talks to Ngrok and then that connects everything together. Now, how does that look? Um, if I go towards my shell and I make a connection break and I don't use my current solution, but I use Ngrok, that's this one. Then I say like, hey, I've got Logseek running so Logseek is running on the default port 12315. And I say ngrok connect the HTTP port 12315 and make that available towards the internet. Um, oh, I have it not in this folder, but in my download folder. So let me adjust that. So when I start that one, that immediately works because it goes like, hey, I'm forwarding this internet address to that local one. And then if I copy this and I go to a browser, you type it in, then I should see the Notion API. Oh yeah, you get like a warning the first time for abuse, but if I then click visit site, it shows everything. Now this works and it's fine if you want to test something, but you're gonna hit issues um, because you need the paid version to get rid of that first screen that pops up. And if you want any fixed name, so this name, which you're running it on, if I stop it and start it, it will generate a new unique ID. So it's fine for development and testing around, but it won't work long-term and it wasn't good enough for my sets because then I need to adjust my make records every time. So I had a different solution in mind. And the different solution for me, and that is very much, uh, who I am as an operations guy is I have a VPS, I have Nginx running on it. So I'm just going to make Nginx do the HTTPS stuff for me. And then I'm going to use a secure shell connection with a reverse tunnel port that connects back from the VPS towards my laptop. Uh, and that works. It works wonderfully well. I just demoed it. So how is that set up? Well, first of all, of course, you have to have Logseek running on a port. Uh, and then I have to set up the tunnel. So I'm going to stop Ngrok and show you what the tunnel looks like. And this is what the tunnel looks like. So I got secure shell minus R and it says like talk to the local host 12315 and on the other side on the local host make 12315 available. Now the local host pit here is important because if you don't put that in or you put like all these sets, then it will make it publicly available, meaning you have an unencrypted port that is used for API calls, this is bad. It will work in a pinch, but I wouldn't recommend it for anything and definitely not hook up your production graphs to it because it's just too easy to get the authorization keys from your connection and then start wreaking havoc inside your Logseek. Don't do it, set up like the secure shell or do a quick test. But if you do any real work with this, you have to set it up. It's a bit of work, but it's worth it. And then my server. So this is one of my WordPress servers that I got set up. I connect to it. And then when I connect to it, then it sets up that reverse tunnel that I need. That's only part of the equation. I could do API calls localhost now, but I still wouldn't be able to uh, use it remotely because it's not hooked up. So to have that set up, uh, let me go to my configuration for it. Maybe use 
everything because it's easier to read. And let me maximize it. So this is my Nginx config. I built one by hand. Normally I generate it with Puppet or Ansible, but you know, I was just messing around on a day. And what it shows here is the server name. So logseektoolsontech.com, uh, where it is, a far W. I didn't need it for this specific case. The only reason I have it set up is because when you set up the uh, certificates, uh, I want to use Let's Encrypt, then you need like a directory where it can put like a temporary check file. So there you go. Uh, access logs. And then what it does is a proxy pass. And what you see here is again, that local host thing. So anything that comes into this domain, logseektoolsontech.com, gets redirected to localhost this port and then secure shell takes over and that connects all the way back to my laptop. Um, proxy redirection because you don't want any changes happening there and a couple of headers for debugging purposes. Not strictly necessary, but nice to have if you're trying to solve it later. Then this is all managed by certbot. So certbot is a command line tool that you can use to let's encrypt. So I made this basic configuration, then ran certbot and said like, hey, SSL encrypt logseek tools on tech.com because I'll be never, ever, ever unencrypted API calls over the internet. Like that is out of the question for me. Uh, I have been doing this job for too long to do anything not encrypted. Yeah, that sets up this work. It does it for me and it does this redirect, meaning that anything that comes in unencrypted will be immediately redirected to the encrypted port and sent through. Now, how does that look in practice? It's currently running, so I should be able to go to Loxic Tools and Text and you see the API. And now if I go towards this one and I disconnect, so I shut off the SSH connection, then I get a bad gateway because the connection is no longer there. It can't access the API, but it will run fine. So then the final bit is how do I make, make connections in between? This part is pretty generic. It's just connecting to Notion and it says like, hey, get database items and anything that has the migrated checkbox on false. I love that when I'm debugging stuff because it means that I can easily like remove some of the check marks here and then get back to trying it over and over again. Um, I used to try you know, monitor database, but then you have to make like new entries all the time. This is a good way to debug it. You can always change it later. Uh, that gets me my data. Then the first thing it needs to do is it needs to make a page. So what I do here, and you can look at the authorization code that's here because I'm going to remove and change that after this video. Um, this is the URL. So this connects straight to logseektoolsontech.com API. I don't need to serialize the URL because I'm not sending any URL data. I'm using the post method. And that means that everything that I send will be here. And then the trick here mostly is, well, you have a content type here, though I think it already does that down here. So this one's not strictly necessary, uh, but you do have your authorization and then the token that you put into Logseek. Now, I'm not gonna hide this token because I said I'm gonna change it. So uh, go ahead and, uh, and try, but I'm definitely gonna make sure that's one's gone. Uh, no, that is my other screen running. Where is the demo one. So if you go here towards, um, let me increase the size a bit. I still think that the interface of this thing really needs to change into like an icon with a drop down, but you know, that's personal stuff. Uh, so you get your authorization tokens. I got make here and I got this key and you generate your own key. I just use like a password generator to make something long. That's the only token. You don't need the name. It works pretty on the token. So chuck the token in here. The rest stays empty. And then I say the body type is raw. The content type is application JSON because we're going to send JSON to it. And then I'm going to ask whatever. You can get this information that's here straight from the API documentation from Logseek. So if I go here uh, and I said create page, then looking in the documentation says create page. Page name is string and the rest is all optional. So I just set the page name in it. That's the first variable. So if we go back to make, there you see I'm taking the value name plain text. So that's the plain text name of the page name in Notion that I'm sending as a create page. And if you run something like that, you will get feedback. And then the feedback will be in the data set where it says like, hey, I created it, gives it an idea and gives it a, a name. And the name is important because you'll need that to add more data later. Then I'm going to go back to Notion and market this process. So I'm putting that little check mark in there that I showed you here that says migrated. And I do that beforehand because if I do it later, then it will loop through it six or seven times, depending on how many text lines you have in there. 
So I wanted to avoid that, so I mark it as done here. Normally I would do it in the end. I could do it with a router, but that would just make this whole example more complex. So you know, put it there. Then I'm going to fetch the contents. So I basically take the page ID I got from here and say like up to 100 lines, you know, just get everything. And then loop through that here by adding lines to the box. You see the six here, that's because I did it six times because there were six lines. And the code in there is basically the same trick. I go to the API again, I say JSON, I have the same authorization key. And then I say append block in page and I give it two parameters. In this case, the name of the page and the plain text letter that I want with a slash n, meaning hit the enter button at the end because I want to be able to, to make sure that they don't uh, stack up behind each other. I don't think it's technically needed. I had this because I initially tried with the um, insert that cursor set where you really have to type it in. And I think now it just does individual ones. But if you go back to the uh, documentation and then let me see which one I was using, the append block in page. So I go here, look for append block in page, should be there somewhere. I'm always bad at this. Alphabets are hard. Uh, so, so append block in page and that basically says page identity, which means the name of the page. So in Logseek, the actual name of the page is the ID. Uh, and then I put a string. And that's about it. So I go to make and I say, give me the name and the string and send that and send it multiple times. I do say parse, uh, parse response because I like the fact that I can then see what I got back from Logseek. So you see all the lines which are all operations. And basically you see the JSON request here and with output, I see what I got back from Logseek. There might be some fireworks in the background. I'm filming this at New Year's Eve and it's always a war zone here in the last month of the year. And that's it. This is just a couple of API calls. I can probably do, do a lot more with it. I need to fiddle around with it a bit and see what I can do. Things that I want to use this for because there's multiple use cases. Um, I'm thinking generating all the pages that I need for content. So when I make, make a new content project, something like this, I'm always lazy. I haven't written down anywhere, but I actually want something in Todoist. And I want something in Notion. I want something in Logseek, all with the same name saying like, hey, collect it over here. I would really love to use this, for example, to get specific blocks or pages where I say, hey, make this a starting point, meaning that I can just type my ideas in Logseek and then take, make, get all that information from Logseek and then dish it out over the different apps that I have. So there's a hundred ideas in my head and this is just how I currently hooked the things up to get it to work. It's a wonderful thing to play with. So I do hope that the interface becomes like a little bit more minimalistic because I get distracted quickly and having like a constant URL in the top corner is just not my thing. So one of my goals was to make like simpler videos so I could make them more often. I'm at home because I can't be arsed to go through the rain to my studio to record this in the last day of the year. I'm filming it on a potato webcam with my uh, simple mic, but it should be fine enough to follow along. And remember, you're awesome. Keep it up. See you in the next one.